I just so happened to come across a video this morning while I was browsing YouTube for content. Now, most of you should know that I am a five-point Calvinist. I do believe anything less than the five is no Calvinist at all. So that's what we are and should be here on this channel because it's biblical. Okay, So I'm going to play a video for you guys of a YouTuber making fun of what he perceives to be the Calvinist great fallacy regarding the will. Okay, And then I'll give my take after the video plays. Depends what you mean by free will. Um, if... When people hear, for example, about Martin Luther writing on the bondage of the will, they will very quickly think, well, that cannot be true because I do what I want. I, I, I act according to what I want to do. Therefore, obviously, I have free will. And in that sense, if that is what you mean by free will, Luther would say, absolutely, you do what you want. But his point in the bondage of the will was to say, yes, but you do not choose what to want. Oh, hey, bro, check this out. So I got two envelopes here, and one of them has a dollar in it, and the other one has a thousand dollars. Okay. Now, you can take your free will choice and choose whichever one of these you want. Any one of these that I want. Yep, any one you want. All right. Well, well, hey, not so fast. Hold on. You see, you can choose either one of these that you want, so long as it's not that one. But you said I could choose any one that I wanted. Well, yes, that's technically true. You can choose either one of these, so long as you want to pick this one. But his point in the bondage of the will was to say, yes, but you do not choose what to want. So all I could choose is this one right here. The dollar. Yes, that's correct. So I don't have a choice. No, no, hey, I didn't say that. You absolutely do have a choice. Listen, you can pick either one of these you want. Okay. So long as it's this one. See? Oh, come on. How many times do we have to go over this? Look, you can pick either one of these that you want so long as you want to pick this one. This is insanity. I am not going through this with you anymore. You just don't understand Calvinism and the bondage of the will. It's so hard to get people to understand that they have free will while at the same time trying to convince them that they don't have free will. Depends what you mean by free will. And in that sense, if that is what you mean by free will, Luther would say, absolutely, you do what you want. But his point in the bondage of the will was to say, yes, but you do not choose what to want. Now, right out the gate, one of the things I need to make clear is that biblical Calvinists do not believe that the sinner has a will that is free from the providential decree of God's sovereignty. No one is free, okay? No one. And to a degree, not even the Lord is free. Now, when we are talking about the freedom that the Lord has, God's freedom means he is free to do anything that is consistent with his nature. And in a lot of ways, we as sinners are the same way. Natural unconverted sinners do have a will. They are in bondage to their sin. That's what, that's what that will is. It's bondage to sin. But they aren't free in that will. They are a slave to it. And one of the glorious things about coming to Christ is being set free from that bondage. Romans 6.18, you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. And so the example that you see in the video where he has two envelopes, one with one dollar and the other with one thousand dollars. Now, when he asked the man to choose which envelope that he wants, well, number one, that's not biblical. This is why saving grace and God's effectual call are irresistible. Okay? It's not God propositioning the sinner and asking, do you want this? No, it's God supernaturally regenerating the sinner so that they do desire him. He has changed their nature. Now, with all that being said, a heretic might ask the question, well, if that's true, how can God make or how can God hold man responsible for not choosing him? You know what's amazing? Women, women can choose to murder their child in their womb and the secular world will praise them for it. But when God, the one who sustains the whole universe, decides to choose and elect people, everyone has a problem with it. You see how hypocritical that is? Listen, we choose all the time, but when God does it, it's a problem. Now, the reason the non-elect deserve to go to hell is because they love their sin and they hated God. Just like everyone else, they broke the law of God, but because they were outside of the grace of God, they have to pay for it, okay? God has never thrown a good man into hell. You know, there's this big ongoing debate about freedom, free will. 
But when you want to define it technically, technically, you have to admit that there is only one person who has free will, and that's God. You do not have free will. Why do I say that? Not entirely. Why do I say that? Because you come under the influence of so many people, so many ideas. The context around you is constantly pressing in on you and influencing you so that your ideas and your decisions are not wholly yours. But the influence of those around you, only God is above that. 